All right, welcome back. I'm really excited to have two folks here, William and Arvin, joining me. So why don't I let everyone introduce themselves and, and tell us what you're most excited about. Let's start here, Arvin, to my left. Hey everybody, uh, my name is Arvind. I'm the specialist responsible for the Confidential to Compute business at AWS. Uh, my focus areas are within EC2, uh, the Nitro system, Nitro Enclaves, Nitro TPM, and other Confidential to Compute capabilities. I work alongside William. Art, what am I most excited about? I'm most excited about the opportunity to work with customers directly on bleeding edge technologies. You know, in this role, I get to be a part of their journey and you know, and help them with, achieve their goals by providing differentiated and unique capabilities like Confidential to Computing. William. Hi everyone, my name is William Yap. I'm a Principal Product Manager at EC2. I, I focus on building security and confidential computing features. Um, most of the, the, the things I'm working on are branded Nitro, so Nitro Enclaves, Nitro Trusted Platform Module, uh, the Nitro system, and, and all. And it's, it's, it's great, thank you for having me. Uh, it's great to be here. Uh Absolutely. So I think one of the things that I, I alluded to when we started the conversation here was uh, that we're going to talk about confidential compute. Then it sometimes occurs to me that you know, maybe not everyone out there understands what confidential compute is. But furthermore, even if you have heard the term confidential compute, I think it's really important to define what confidential compute is from an AWS perspective. So Arvind, why don't you help defined exactly what that is for folks out there. Absolutely, and let's make sure everybody understands what confidential computing is, right? <laughs> yeah. So let me start by providing an overview and then you know, I'm sure we'll hear from William a little bit more. When we, when we talk about confidential computing, we are really talking about data protection, right? We do three things with data. We store data, we move data, and we process data. The mechanisms to protect data while it's at rest and in transit have existed for a while. Confidential computing is about protecting data while the data is being processed. At AWS, we define confidential computing as the use of specialized hardware and associated firmware to protect data while it's in use from any unauthorized access. Essentially, we are extending that data protection that used to exist when data is you know, just stored all the way end to end to when data is being processed in memory. Right. Let me turn it over to William, see if he has more to add to this I, and I all the considerations. I, 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 like, I like your explanation, but I think, I, I think your explanation is good, it's accurate, right? But uh, th there's an, it's still a very broad term. And you know, when we engage with customers, I think it's very important to look at what problems they're looking to solve with confidential computing. You know, a, a broad term, there's many different solutions, many different, many different technologies Absolutely. and ways to solve it. Um, and you know, based on all this interaction with customers, I think there are two big categories based on these customer inputs that you know, customers think about when they think about confidential computing. First, uh, the first thing is I want to protect my data in use um, from the cloud operator, from the, the cloud service provider. That's, that's what we call uh, the, the first dimension. And then the second dimension is, you know, I'm running super sensitive data like social security numbers, uh, financial data, uh, healthcare data, and it's the data so sensitive. I want to protect the data from my even my own users and my own, my own operators and my own software. And also That's a where the second basis, right, uh, with that kind of data. Not everyone needs that yep. information, right? Yep. So yep. it's trying to be protective of that. What we would call what is that PII, you know, personal information. Right. You know, identifiable information, right. PII. Right. Sorry, William, I interrupted. Yeah, so th <laughs> think about just two dimensions, and yeah. then from there, mm -hmm. work with the AWS team, uh, look at our solutions, and then that's how you can pick the right one that, that fits your, your requirements. So what makes confidential compute unique from an AWS perspective, William? Well, what's unique in AWS is that we have a good range, good variety, a diversity of offer offerings and configurations that can meet different types of customer requirements. Now we're going to go more into more details about Nitro later, but you know if you're looking for protection from AWS operators, we have that with the Nitro system, uh, where by default there's, there's no operator access um, for AWS operators. Um, if you're looking to protect uh, your 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 data from your own operators, from your own software, we have solutions like Nitro Enclaves. Um, on top of all this, you know if you want to run an EC2 instance without the AWS hypervisor with, and use your own hypervisor. We have our bare metal instance types. Th those are enabled through Nitro as well. Um, we have memory encryption. Th there's just a whole range of um, things that are available in a AWS. But, so, so that's one, one thing that makes it unique. Um, the other thing that's really special about AWS is the Nitro system. That's something that we spent, uh, you know, we, we started investing in this technology back in 2013. And that's way before um, terms like confidential computing uh, were, were, were popular. And 
You know, when we designed Nitro system, we were very intentional, where no AWS operator would have access to your data. You know, if you think about a typical typical data center, you know, not not in AWS, um, this type of systems would have um, ability to SSH, to debug, to to operate on. Uh, in AWS, those mechanisms just do not exist. This is the additional defense in depth um, that 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 is available through Nitro, and this is available to any Nitro-based EC2 instance. Yeah, th this is all really fascinating to me. We uh, and you know the Nitro system is particularly important to all of us. We heard earlier as well from Anthony Liguori and Ali about the design of that and the construction of the Nitro system and how you know we purposely built this with this with this access, with the lack of access to protect data. So we mentioned earlier protecting customer code and data from operators in the cloud or uh, us and how the Nitro system uh, enables it. So maybe we could define that Nitro system a little bit more. Sure, uh, I'll, I'll try to do that first and, <laughs> and then we'll hear from William. Uh, the Nitro system is a really a combination of purpose-built silicon software and firmware. Three, three different components to it, right? So we pull it all together, and that's what the Nitro system is. So if you step back and think about it, it's really the foundation of all of the virtualization that brings EC2 to life. All of the instances that we've launched since early 2018 are Nitro-based. We've had some shape or form of Nitro you know, even before that, but since 2018, everything has been fully based on the Nitro system itself, right? But to understand what the Nitro system is, we need to first understand what the classic virtualization model looks like, right? So with the classic virtualization model, the host is where all of the VMs, the other virtualization functions, the networking, IO functions, storage and device models, security, management, uh, maintenance, everything is inside the host along with a hypervisor that orchestrates all of this with the VMs, right? With the Nitro system, we abstracted away all of that, all of that networking, IOs, storage device models, connection to EBS, instant storage, and, and security. Everything got abstracted away from the host, and we left the host with just the VMs and a super lightweight hypervisor. What this allows us to do is deliver three things to our customers. Better performance, lower cost, and increased security posture. We were very intentional in our design of the Nitro system. You heard from William, there is no operator access. What that means is there is no mechanism today for any AWS operator to access customer content in a Nitro host. I can feel William itching to talk a little bit more. So <laughs> let, let's let's hear from William about yeah, what's happening here. Right? Right? Yeah. Let's go. Thanks, Arvind. <laughs> I'm going to borrow a bit of your analogy here uh, to explain the different components. So the, the Nitro system, there are three main components there. Uh, it is the, the Nitro card, a family of Nitro cards, the Nitro security chip, and the Nitro hypervisor. Let me explain what's a Nitro card, right? So you said that you know, the, in, in, in um, a traditional host, um, you have software that belongs to the operator that's running together the virtual machines. With the Nitro system, those software are removed, and they're running on this dedicated computers, um, which we call Nitro cards. And so, so that's what Nitro cards do. And you have a Nitro card for networking, you have a Nitro card for storage, um, and, and, and local storage and all. By the uh, way, I love the phrase dedicated computer because I think that's it kind of gives people a better idea exactly yeah. what we're dealing with, what people are dealing with. I think, you know, Mar Martin and I were talking earlier about, you know, sometimes it, people don't necessarily understand some of the complexity that happens behind the scenes. The simplification, it's simple, but also it's its own system as well to help create that simplification. Oh, sorry, that's William. Right. So, so that's the Nitro card. Yeah. Um, then the other component is the Nitro hypervisor. The Nitro hypervisor doesn't do much other than manage your EC2 instance. That's by design, right? It's a very thin hypervisor uh, with minimal functionality. Uh, the last component is the Nitro security chip. This is the component that ensures that only validated software is running on the host. Um, together with the Nitro controller, which is yet another Nitro card, they form the hardware wheel of trust on the entire system. So that, that's, that's the Nitro system. I mean, this is really important, this strong uh, combination of these three components together that help design and forge the backbone of the Nitro system, but also it forms the backbone of our own security system as well. So Nitro system, as we mentioned uh, several times today, is designed entirely by AWS. How can customers and others understand the Nitro system and the perfect protections Excuse me, it provides for workloads? Yeah, one, one thing that we've done since we launched Nitro System is that we've have, we have been talking publicly on it. Every, I think every re reInvent, there, there will be a session on Nitro where we go to and the design. And it's one of our most popular sessions. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I mean, not, yeah. <laughs> I mean, really that's yeah. coming up in November, too. So. I, I still have those uh, videos bookmarked. Sometimes I need to refer and, yeah. and, and understand uh, oh. how, how the, the, the explanation, right? 
And, and so we have been messaging that and explaining how Nitro works there. Um, we, last year, we, we took um, steps to, to a, step, a step further by writing a security white paper on the Nitro system that combines things that you see on, on, on reInvent into this white paper just that makes it easier for customers to evaluate um, EC2 and, and, and Nitro. And most recently this year, uh, we, we work with an uh, independent third party uh, security firm to do uh, an, an assessment, a review of the Nitro system. And they just recently published a report about this. This is from uh, NC, NCC Group. Yeah. Um, this report is publicly available and it, it talks about um, the outcome of the review saying that there's no gap in the Nitro system about the claims that we're talking about today. Um, of course, please you know, re review the details. There's a lot of interesting things there in terms of methodology and the claims that have evaluated. And this, are, like, you see the pattern here. We are doing more and more to, to, to explain to customers how Nitro works. Uh, we're putting more information, more transparency, and more assurance. Um, and I think that's important. And we're, we're very keen to engage with customers on what, what else that we can do here. Yeah, and I, I just want to give a comment about the both the transparency and also the NCC report. You know, I mean, I think we tried. We started last year. Matt Garman, uh, our, one of our senior vice presidents, published a blog last year about our commitment to that transparency. And what William, you're talking about here with the white paper and also the NCC group is just a small portion of that overall transparency. But it's really a commitment. That, when we talk about transparency, it's a commitment of transparency to customers and folks who are listening out there to understand like what we do with the with our security and also you know the NCC audit report that was championed here you know, is also a piece of that and then one other kind of note about it is is that in the last couple of weeks you know we had reinforced which is the AWS security conference and CJ Moses who is our chief security uh, officer at, at AWS and Amazon here was also talking about that uh, NCC report publicly as well so it kind of goes this is it shows how important I think it is to customers, but also you know how this is something that's a top down that all of our leaders are also buy into as well here. So um, we've talked a lot about the Nitro system, and you know a lot of people here today have talked about it. But when people use the Nitro system, is there any change they need to actually make to their code to do anything? I see you shaking your head. <laughs> no, no, so. the answer is no. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you're absolutely right. No, no, no code changes needed. Um, I think that's the beauty of the Nitro system. Like uh, all the protections that we have been talking about today, uh, even in other sessions, right? Like those are uh, has been there since 2017 when you launch a regular um, Nitro-based EC2 instance. There is no, there's no special enablement, special flag, special code that you need to do in order to use it. I, I think that makes it, you know, a super easy way to get started in the cloud. Number one and number two, you know, the assurances that we provide you or guarantee are there from the get-go. You don't have to take any action. So, that was a great overview of the Nitro system and some of those default security assurances. And so, I think we've talked quite a bit about the first dimension of confidential compute and that context. So, let's shift our focus a little bit to that second dimension where we talked about where our customers of ours may want to protect their content even from within themselves or that kind of specialized data that we talked about. Right. How do we address that requirement? Yeah, sure. So, this is where we're really going beyond the you know, the security and the isolation that we are providing already with the Nitro system by default and starting to look at defense in depth, right? Not all data needs to be treated the same way. So that's something customers need to remember, right? The question to ask yourself is, what are you protecting and who are you protecting it from? Right. And if the answer to that is, I'm going to start protecting data even from myself as a customer or from malicious actors who could pose as even admin level users from my end and not gain access to this personally identifiable information kind of data you talked about or financial information, digital assets, whatever the case may be. Now if you're starting to, starting to think about protecting that data even from yourselves, that's when you look at an EC2 feature like Nitro Enclaves. With Nitro Enclaves, customers have the ability to create an isolated virtual machine from their own EC2 instance. This allows them to further isolate, secure, and process this highly sensitive code and data that they're most concerned about. So that's what Nitro Enclaves is, and that, that's how it ties to Dimension 2, where it provides them, provides them with the ability to protect the data even from themselves. I think you also make a key point about it, is, is, is evaluating you know, when, you have an, when you have this type of information and you want to protect it. I think that you know, that's something you know, people ask us about when to use an Enclave, but part of the answer, unfortunately, is a little bit about like, you, know, you need to also decide like, what data and how you want to protect it as well. And that's a choice that's, that's made, and we have some examples and we'll talk through some of yeah. that, but you know, that's also you know, different 
uh, data is of different levels of importance to, to customers and corporations. So given that Nitro Enclaves uh, enforces a, a higher degree of, a high degree of isolation, I just say, can we elaborate a little bit further about how, what is the developer experience in actually executing or building and deploying such a Nitro Enclave? I know the three of us have had the pleasure of <laughs> having multiple customer conversations about that execution. So I think we should detail it out though for. Yeah, for, it's, it's designed for ease of use and you know, uh, invent and simplify is what we do here at AWS <laughs> yeah. right now. So uh, William, maybe you want to you touch on the yeah. uh, ease of use here. Yeah, I, I think when we were looking at building a Nitro Enclave, we wanted to make sure that this is a technology that any developers can, can harness the power of. Yeah. Um, and we we have made sure that the so a Nitro Enclave is a virtual machine. You can install any type of application, use any type of, of um, uh, programming language, and and, and, and and on on the the Enclave. So that makes the development easier. You don't need to be a uh, micro architectural expert or or to, to be able to harness that this this technology. The other thing that we have done uh, that the special Nitro Enclave is that we have first class integration with other AWS services. Uh, for example, the AWS Key Management Service. Um, so you can encrypt data, send it to the Enclave, but how are you going to decrypt it and manage the key and all? And we figured that part out. We've, we've done the heavy lifting, and that's that's something that's super powerful that we, we see customers leveraging and using things for like multi-party computation. I think that's a great example, and it's also kind of also a, a theme that I've heard multiple times today when you know we talked about even the creation of the Neuron SDK for our training and inferential platform. You know, you don't we don't launch something at Amazon without trying to to with the without the customer in mind. And the, what you're really talking about, and I feel like you're saying is, is we tried to simplify this, so that no matter, and take into account, no, no matter whether the programming language you're using or the architecture, you know, we've tried to make this as easy as possible. So maybe um, we could get a real world uh, example where the capability is applicable, <laughs> right? Sure, that, that's what we live for, the real world examples. You know, this is really where the rubber hits the road, right? Prior to this, it's all theoretical, whatever we talked about. So let's take an example, you know, say something relatable. Let's say Take the three of us here, right? Sure. Uh, so this is a this is an example I like to talk about a lot. It's about multi-party collaboration. Let's say there's Art. He's he's got this machine learning model that he's trained and ready to go, I do. right? But it's a secret sauce. He wants to license it, monetize it, but doesn't want anybody to see it. And then there's William who's got encrypted data sets, you know, sensitive information that he doesn't want anybody to see, including himself, right? So now he wants to use your model. Yeah. You want to monetize it, but neither of you want to share what's in your data set or your model with each other. That's right. That's where I come in. I'm the enclave, right? Both of you drop your model inside me and the data set inside me. And you can go ahead to proceed and process this, this data with the model to draw inferences from the data without either of you gaining access to the other party's IP or data. When the processing is done, you can take your data set back and you can take your model back you monetize it without William ever having seen your model, and William can draw inferences from the data by using your model without having ever seen anything on your side either, right? So both of you didn't get to see each other's data or model, and then everything was processed securely inside the Enclave. So that's one example. This is a construct that I just explained. It's not a, it's not an actual workload, but you can see the possibilities here. Right? It could be multiple different parties. I gave an example of two. There could be ten. There could be more. But Enclaves provides a very organic environment for for use cases such as multi-party collaboration. I think it's a great example. I also want to uh, make note that William owes me money after this <laughs> as well, just so we're on the same page here. Uh, uh, let me also yeah. let me also give another you know um, specific example here. Let's take ad tech. As, as, as a use case, right? Advertisers have traditionally relied on, say, third-party cookies to deliver tailored advertising to consumers. But more recently, they're starting to feel the need to reduce their reliance on cookies in favor of you know, uh, privacy. And, and to do that, they're starting to look at alternate solutions. And this is where uh, the Trade Desk has developed a uh, non-proprietary, open-source um, technology called Unified ID 2.0. Here, they're actually tokenizing personal information inside an enclave. And that when, when a personal information comes inside the enclave, gets decrypted, and then tokenized, nobody has access to any of the data in there. And then the token gets sent out you know, for personalized advertisement, publishing, whatever the case may be. But everything happens securely inside the enclave. So these are just two different examples. At the end of the day, when you're talking about Nitro Enclaves, you're really talking about a full-blown virtual machine. right? So the possibilities are endless. The question to ask yourself is, what am I protecting? 
who am I protecting it from? And that's going to, and we're going to derive the answers from there. I think that that's a great, uh, those are two great examples, uh, you know, that we talk about. And I think that, you know, the second one here with the personal identifiable information with cookies, I think everybody has dealt with that. And, you know, if you accept cookies and stuff like that. So when it, the, the other thing is, is how can customers take advantage of that? Now we've given some great descriptions here. So how does someone take advantage? Sure. Um, there are, two different approaches that uh, you could expect a customer to take, right? It really comes down to personal preference, I would say, uh, depending on you know your expertise and how much resources you have at your disposal to operationalize this and whatnot, right? Nitro Enclaves is a compute primitive. And so customers can either choose to build all of their systems and applications all by themselves organically, or they could leverage our robust partner network. We have a lot of partners who have built vertically aligned solutions leveraging Nitro Enclaves, and customers might find it interesting you know, to, to adopt that and speed their time to market. It really comes down to what they want to do. right? We also have a lot of useful documentation, very easy to use, and, and also a self-help, self-paced workshop that customers could go and, and take advantage of to learn how to use Enclaves, to learn the basics. I, I would say that's a good place to start. I really conducts those training in person and reinvent, <laughs> reinforce. Yeah. But uh, c customers can actually get the whole training uh, for for free yeah. um, on. on you know, uh, on, on the web page as well. I think yeah. there's a link there that goes there. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I think that this is a great kind of way to, to to kind of talk to customers here that we have both a virtual model of this and we have an in-person version at yeah. some of these uh, some some of these sessions and summits that we offer from reinforce to reinvent as well. And and as I mentioned earlier about popularity of sessions, it also happens to be very popular for folks to 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 learn about those enclaves. So look. I like to end with a kind of a forward-looking statement here a little bit, and I know we're not entirely in the business of predicting things, but <clears throat> is there anything we can share about what's coming next in confidential computing? I think if we had to think about Nitro Enclaves as building blocks, um, uh, Lego bricks, and we have, you know, it's, it's super exciting for me personally to see how customers have leveraged it to build all, all this type of solution. We've seen use cases in blockchain, financial services, healthcare, uh, in, in ag tech. Um, we have published some of those materials, published some use cases, some case study, and I think um, w w that's that's going to be the focus. Right? We want to to make sure that we are um, showing customers how this Lego bricks can be formed. Um, and we're showing the, we're giving the, the, the Lego manual yeah. uh, for customers to, to do it. Yeah. Any? I, yeah. Anything? No, everything, everything we do here at AWS, we work backwards from our customer requirements. Yeah. So we want to continue talking to them. We want to hear from them. You know, that's really what's next, right? Keep talking to us, and we'll keep talking to you. Let's build, build something yeah, exciting. Think, you know, to to just uh, following up on William's point as well, we've spent quite a bit of time this year, kind of providing more customer examples as well on our Nitro Enclaves pages. You can see customer examples there. We're going to roll out more information, and that transparency that William mentioned is part of that process. And I know a lot of people out there look to hear like what other people have used things and you know reach out to us there's information on on our confidential compute pages on the nitro enclaves page on how to kind of get a hold of all of us and we're pretty easily accessible as well and one thing i want to tee up is is ne coming up next i was at reinforce Ar arvind and i were at reinforce as i mentioned last week and I had the great opportunity to be able to talk to one of our customers who has been using the Nitro system because of that confidential compute posture here. So coming up next is a conversation that I had had last week at Reinforce with Skyflow. And let's uh, take it to that. And it's great to get a customer example here on confidential compute Absolutely. and on the Nitro Absolutely. system. Absolutely.